stuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Leave it. Okay, just drip. Just drip. Just drip. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. Louisiana is known for many things. Rich culture, great food, and unique landscape. But in the fishing world, people come down here for one thing. Big bull redfish. We decided to leave our home waters in Texas, head down to the bayou, and chase these world-class fish. Simply put, we had no idea what we were about to get ourselves into. And as is the case with any DIY trip, it had its ups. <laughs> and it had its downs. Maybe we stumbled onto a few fish along the way. This is Running of the Bulls. Alright guys, we are Louisiana bound in the morning. Right now we're getting all our gear organized and packed. And we figured while well, we did that, we go ahead and make a video about it and talk to y'all about the rods, reels, kind of the gear we're bringing with us to Louisiana. Hopefully it'll help you guys pack for your own DIY Louisiana redfish trip. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off talking about our rods that we're gonna bring. Uh, we're bringing seven rods. Of those seven, probably only one is actually overkill. We've got a seven, two eights, a nine, two tens, and also a 12 weight. And the 12 weight's probably overkill for what we're gonna be going after. Um, but these big, you guys are gonna have to excuse Dory. She wanted to be part of this. I guess she's given up on it already. Um, with these big reds in Louisiana, you know, we're, we're expecting tough fights, so we wanna make sure we've got a rod with enough strength to handle it, um, handle these fish. So definitely, that's where the nines and the tens are gonna come into play, and those will probably be our go-to rods. Um, and then as we start fishing more and we figure out what's going on and what we're dealing with fish wise we might go to lighter rods to the sevens and the eights as for rod specifics the 7 10 and 12 that i'm bringing are all g loomis nrx pluses the nine weight that i'm bringing is a tfo im6 lefty cray signature series two-piece rod and then the rods that zach is bringing he has one eight weight that's a tfo clouser Another eight weight that's a TFO Axiom 2, and then his 10 weight is a TFO ESOX. Reels. For my nine weight, I've got a Sage 1680. It's one of the older ones, but I don't know how long I've had it, and it works really well. It's never let me down. For my seven weight and my 10 weight, I, I've got Evo Ross Evolution Salt on there. Um, and then the 12 weight is still, it's another evolution salt. Um, one of the things that I really like about these evolutions is this is the drag adjustment. So I can palm it and adjust it real quickly instead of having to try and get my fingers down on it. That's just for me. Um, and then fly lines, both of these reels have bonefish taper lines on them. Um, it's about a 45 foot head on there so that just basically gives a lot of weight up forward on the line and then just allows it also slightly gentler uh, to land on the water a little bit gentler than say like a redfish taper would um, and then this has got a, a tropical salt water line on it they're all Rio lines um, this is a tropical salt water line and this has got about a 40 foot head on it as well now, going into Louisiana in the fall, a lot of people might start looking at winter lines versus tropical lines. And just remember to look at the water temperature versus the air temperature. Um, the water temperature that we've been seeing is around 70, so this tropical line should still be fine. And if it's not, then I think we've got plenty of extras. So here are the reels that I'm bringing along. Um, it's the uh, TFO, the BBK SD, stands for sealed drag. Um, it's really something you need in a saltwater rod, sealed drag. Um, that salt can really mess it up. But anyways, um, yeah, just a large rubber reel, nothing, nothing fancy. 
fancy. Makes a cool little clicking noise. But I got a, uh, on this one I got the Bonefish Quick Shooter line, uh, the eight weight. Um, about, I think, 35 foot head, just to make those quick, you know, short casts. Um, this is another eight weight reel. This is the Permit line. A um, little bit longer head, uh, really good for when you got a line out and you make it quick, pick it up quick, make a second cast, uh, which I need to do frequently. <laughs> Anyways, that's that. And then this is a little bit, a little larger, a little beefier reel, um, same model, TFO. Um, this is the Winter Redfish line. Um, it's got a pretty big, pretty thick head on it um, to really cast out those larger flies that we'll be throwing to those big bull reds in Louisiana. And so uh, I'm just gonna go over a few of the flies um, that were loaned to us by Dave Hayward at Swan Point Landing Fly Shop. Um, anyways, yeah, at first glance, it looks like a lot of feathers, a lot of seducer type patterns. Um, here's like a little white version right here. Um, yeah, a little bit, a little bit bigger than, uh, you know, what we throw on the flats here in Texas, but hey, big, big flies, big fish. Another white pattern right there. Um, this one's more of like a, you know, natural color tan. Um, here's a little bigger black one, a little bigger color on it. Got some flash to it. It's also weightless too, so that'll be interesting. And uh, this one's got some deer hair on the back. Some bucktail looks like. So yeah, pretty much the juice from what I would, from what I would say. This one looks pretty well used. Got a nice little rust on the hook there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, nothing crazy. I mean, as you can see, it's all kind of like the same pattern. Just different colors. Um, this one's a little different though. It's got like a little rabbit tail right there, and then uh, some deer hair on the head. Um, but yeah, I mean, these fish, from what I've heard, these fish aren't gonna be picky, and uh, just gotta put it in front of their face, right, Pete? But yeah, here's more of like some brighter color, flashier stuff. That super clear water. I can't hold this thing to save my life. There it is, green. Um, yep, more green. This one's weightless. Yep. And, uh, this one here is actually, I'm kind of, I think I'm most excited about this one. This one looks absolutely crazy. Just like a little crab body with a giant rabbit tail on the end there. Call this the tiger crab, and uh, we're just gonna go with that. So yeah, um, I guess we'll start with these, and uh, you know, Pete's gonna show you our fly tying materials in case these don't work. All right, so here's a quick rundown of fly tying material: vise, hooks, thread, eyes, legs, Palmer Chanel, cactus Chanel, Polar Chanel, marabou, flash, rabbit strips, bucktail, hackle. Craft fur, and finally brushes. So that's what we're gonna bring for fly tying material. Uh, do we need all of it? Probably not, but we're gonna bring it anyways, just in case we uh, have a fly that's really working for us and we need some more. Um, in addition, we're gonna bring floral and mono. We're also gonna be bringing uh, plenty of clothes, outerwear, wading boots, uh, turtle box, so we can bump some beats on the boat, and then snacks, water, Gatorade, but for now, we're going to get the truck back, get on the road, and get to Louisiana.
bringing clothes, outerwear, rods, reels, flies, lots of flies, fly tying material, lots of fly tying material, leaders, tippet material, wading boots, a turtle box, boat snacks, and a shotgun. Wait, Pete, why are we bringing a shotgun? Okay, fine, we're not bringing a shotgun. Hit like, hit subscribe, all this stuff, and we'll see you guys Friday for part two of Running of the Bulls. Don't laugh.